Oh, we're live. We are live. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you very much for coming to this webinar, PharmaQ webinar on um, knowing your GHG number and um, PharmaQ and GHG calculators and how PharmaQ can help um, you work out your number and um, with various different calculators out there. So I'm coming to you from the not so sunny UK, mid Wales, um, in the middle of farming. Um, it's eight o'clock in the morning here and um, I'm over here looking after some family and Tom and Craig and um, other Farm IQ staff is sitting back in back in Wellington and the Waikato supporting me doing this um, doing this webinar so that's awesome. Right so should we get started? Um, welcome everyone we've got Thomas sitting in the Waikato at the moment. Thomas is our um, Business Development Manager for Pharmax, and he is going to answer any questions about around Pharmax, the Pharmax calculator for greenhouse gas emissions. And we've also got Craig, who is our um, Business Manager for the Upper South Island in Canterbury, and he will also answer some questions on you know what's going on down there because it's, it can be slightly different. Oh, we've got Garth as well. Cool, welcome, Garth. Um, cool, I think we'll just jump into it. This is going to be a really quick webinar. Um, we can dive into PharmIQ, we can probably dive into Pharmax if, if um, Thomas is set up there if you need to. We're here to answer questions, so please keep them coming. Um, stick them in the chat box, that's all pretty easy. We've got Chelsea here as well. Welcome, Chelsea. Um, yeah, stick your, stick your questions in the chat, any comments that you want to have. Um, we have got a really awesome resource to, to provide you I think it's in the Sam it's in the um, you can download it I think from this from this webinar um, and it's an essential guide basically to using the beef and lamb calculator with your farm IQ records so um, feel free to download that and use that but we can kind of touch on what's in that and how it works throughout the webinar so as I said um, just check your chat questions into the chat and we will answer them throughout the web webinar and there will also be time at the end um, for questions as well so here we go all right so why know your number um unless you've been living under a rock um Hawaka Okinawa have been working tirelessly probably for the last kind of three or four years on um, helping farmers understand what greenhouse gas emissions mean for um, agriculture and farming and they've got to a point now where um, papers have gone off to government and by 2025 biological emissions will, will likely be taxed. Um, so you're going to have to pay for excessive emissions coming off, your, coming off your farm. So it's really important that you know what your emissions number are, is or are. are. Um, and understanding your number um, basically means that you can manage it. If you don't, if you don't measure, you can't, you can't manage it. And if you don't, don't manage and you can't measure so it's really important that you know your number um, there are lots of um, really cool calcula calculators out there we're focusing today on the beef and lamb calculator and also the Pharmax calculator there are others out there um, they all give you a slightly different number um, but the the basic idea is that they give you a you know really good understanding of what your what your emissions number is so that you can manage it better um, and the 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 main reason that I feel that you should know your number is that um, there's a feel good factor in, in understanding your number. It allows you to be in control of your budget. It allows you to understand your system better, how your system fits within the landscape, um, how your animals fit within the landscape and how your animals and your number and your budget all contribute to, to having a successful business. Um, Knowing your number also allows you to tell your story. So if you're a farmer that um, sells directly to consumers and you can you can tell your story a hell of a lot better. Um, yeah, understanding your number means that you can, you know, you can communicate with your, your consumers directly. And also there are many processes out there that offer premiums for low carbon or zero carbon produced meat. So Silver Fun Farms, for instance, have have um, low carbon, zero carbon programs, um, processor programs. So you can get those premiums um, if you 
understand your number and what that means for your farm and you can report on it better. Yeah. All right, so next slide. Any questions so far? We're flying along, this is great. As I said, check, chuck them in the chat box. Um, and so what information do you need to calculate your number? So there seems to be a little bit of confusion around, um, you know, what, what do I need to do? What kind of information, what kind of data um, do I have to kind of, you know, give um, auditors and calculators, you know, when, when was the last time I ate um, deep fried Mars bars, that kind of thing. I'm sitting in the UK so I can talk about deep fried Mars bars. Um, and yeah, so a lot of confusion around, you know, what's what kind of information do you need to calculate your number? But there's really only, if you, if you strip it right, right the way back, there's really only three um, data sets from your farm system or from your farm information that you need to to provide um, or put into a calculator. And the number one is um, stock rec um, that includes stock classes. And um, so stock classes as in um, mixed age cows, um, mixed age ewes, R1s, so forth. Um, and as long as you've got a, you know, a detailed detailed stock rec that's up to date and you can find your detailed stock rec really easily in farm iq um, at organization level um, but you can also go into your stock list as well which is in which is at farm level um, if anybody would like me to show you where that is then please check that in um, um Alison, we do have a quick question here from kevin uh yeah. at what intervals are mm -hmm. recs presumably that means stock recs required at what it, what intervals? So you have open and for the beef and lamb um, calculator, you have open and closing stock. So um, I'm going to really quickly share my screen here. Just bear with me one moment. I'm doing all this from a laptop with a microphone that doesn't work. So there's a little bit of a technology workaround. Hang on a minute. I'm just going to share my screen. I'm going to show you what the GHG calculator looks like. <laughs> So we'll dive into the beef and lamb calculator and then um, Thomas, you can answer that question from a Farmax point of view. Sure. Um, sure. In a sec. So <clears throat> this is the this is the result from this is the report from the beef and lamb calculator for my demo FEP farm. And if we go into livestock balances, so there are four tabs basically, or yeah four tabs that you need to put information into, your farm, livestock balances, grazing movements, and livestock movements. And the first one I would see is, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, livestock balances. Um, and so the categories are owned on farm, owned off farm, grazed on farm, and they start with at open at, and at close. So opening stock numbers and closing stock numbers for those categories of ownership, if you like. I hope I answered that question all right. If if I didn't, please, um, please let me know. Oops. Yep, and we've got a we've got another question along similar lines from Lisa. Do we use wintering stock units? And then I guess just a comment from Joyce that stock numbers change a lot during the year. Yes, yeah, they do. So if you start with your opening stock units, um, so yeah, wintering stock units wouldn't that be because it is it's opening so at the beginning of your financial year, um, and yeah, so you start there and then you you. Um, end with your closing stock units. So that would um, reconcile, I think I'm pretty sure. We've got Ron Pello on the, the line from Beef and the FEP lead from um, Beef and Lamb on the line. <clears throat> Hello, what's happened to you? Oh, golly. I think I've just lost you. No, I haven't, sorry. My screen crept out then. Um, yeah, we've got Ron Pello on the line. I'm pretty sure that um, it's, it reconciles your stock throughout the year. So if you put your opening numbers in and your closing numbers in, then it'll rec reconcile what you've had throughout the year. I can see yeah. Tanya Dees. Um, just, to, just to add to that quickly from the Farmax side. So um, <clears throat> Farmax sort of covers various aspects of your farm system. For those less familiar with it, it's not just greenhouse gases. We have basically a full stock rec that you can change i mean you can put events in daily really so your stock numbers change a lot throughout the year uh, in farmax and 
we capture, like I say, a few different aspects of the farm system. So profitability, a feed budget, and then your greenhouse gases. And um, to Tanya's comment around weights, we've got basically um, live weight gain tracking right through the season as well. So Farmex will sort of adjust for all of those changes through the year. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Thomas. Um, if anybody at Farm IQ or even Ron has got any comments on that or some helpful helpful tips, um, then please chuck them in the chat as well. That would be great. Um, it would be cool to have a bit of a forum going, really. Um, so, oh, hang on a minute. Where's my slides gone? Yeah. Cool. Whoops. All right. So, um, so once you've got your stock rack in there, um, really easy to understand what your livestock balances are. Um, and then the, the second data set that you need to put into um, any calculator is um, effective area. So, what is the effective area of your land? So, what land are you? What what land are you actually working? What land is you know under pasture? Um, or under crops, for instance. Um, so effective area can be found really easily in Farm IQ. It's literally the bottom left-hand um, corner of your screen. So as long as you set your farm map up properly, um, so you've taken out races and yards and so forth and put them into you know, non-productive and non-effective um, categories, and then you've only got your paddocks that you're, and the areas that you're, you're farming properly um, in as effective area, then you'll see that in the bottom left hand part of your your screen on your map um, the map screen in farm iq so that will give you your effective area um, there are some tips on the essential guide as well on on how to um, make changes to effective area in your map um, through your paddock list or actually drawing them into your map yourself um, so there's lots of tips and you know bits and pieces there to help you you know sort your map out and make it you know exact um, because as we know if you if you put accurate information into a calculator, you're going to get accurate information out. Um, and then number two farm map um, is woodlots, so exotic forestry um, and indigenous forestry for the beef and lamb um, greenhouse calculator. In Farmax, Thomas, can you tell us in Farmax what the forestry categories are? Uh, I can just give me one sec. We basically pull all of our forestry or carbon sequestration data from MPI. So uh, ours should align with those. Uh, so we've got Pinus radiata, Douglas fir, exotic softwoods, exotic hardwoods, and indigenous forest. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, <clears throat> so basically, the calculator wants to know what exotic forestry you've got in there because exotic forestry sequesters more more carbon. Um, <clears throat> technically so, um, and allegedly sequesters more carbon than the indigenous forestry. That's um, the jury's out on that at the moment, but um, the, the, the information and the hard science and the calculations for with MPI all done on exotic forestry and, and Pinus radiata. Um, so um, yeah, so put your woodlots in. So if you've got um, exotic woodlots on your on your farm, then make sure that you put them in accurately as well. Um, and you can again, you can go to the, the Farm IQ map and just um, click on your click on your woodlots if that's if that's the way you've set them up in your in your farm map, and um, it'll give you on the bottom right hand side of the screen a little legend telling you exactly how much um, hectareage you've got in woodlots. Um, and then the same with bush blocks as well. So if you've got bush blocks um, and um, you know, areas of indigenous vegetation then um, you can map those out um, and as a, as a feature group, if you like, or a land management unit in Farm IQ. And then again, you'll have a little legend on the bottom right hand part of your screen for bush box. So that's all really easy as far as kind of mapping is concerned. You, you'll absolutely nail it with, with Farm IQ, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the third data set is fertilizer use, obviously. Um, hang on, I'm just going to, before I charge on to fertilizer use. I'm just going to go through those questions. Stock numbers, cool. Ron, thank you, Ron. Uh, and Garth, <laughs> thank you for helping Tanya. That's awesome. 
and Joyce. Joyce is asking, isn't there a date that woodlots don't count? Um, so pre-1990, I believe, is um, when woodlots don't count. However, um, it depends whether they're in the ETS or not. Um, I might ask Ron to answer that while I charge on the fertilizer <laughs> use. Yeah, um, and we've, we've just got another yeah. couple of questions coming through on the Q&A section. I'm not sure if you can see those, Alison, but uh, Kevin's got a question just to clarify the calculation is on open close and no consideration for numbers changes during the year. I think yeah. Ron clarifies that for us. So uh, Ron says beef and lamb calculator makes assumptions regarding stock numbers uh, and feed demand over the year based on wintered stock units. So there's some assumptions yeah. in there around those changes. Great. Thank you, Ron. That's really cool. Um, he's also put a really handy link in there as well to some information. Uh, a PDF, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and Tanya, Tanya's asking, is the beef and lamb calculator going to be changed to take into account the 1st of January 2008 date? Um, re native bush in Hawaka Okinawa. I think we all have to wait to see what happens with Hawaka Okinawa's um, um, presentation to the government and um, you know what what option will be or what, what pricing me mechanism will be chosen in the end and also um, the climate change commissions and the um, and the government's um, decision on um, whether they start to bring in riparian planting and you know sequestering carbon on farm through other methods other than exotic forestry and indigenous bush blocks yeah um yeah ron's right um still to be determined <laughs> tbd everyone so watch that space but um i can highly recommend using using the farm iq map in particular to help you get a really good understanding of what the possibilities are so if Hewaka Okinawa and the government decide that yes, um, the your emissions your emissions number will start taking into account um, riparian planting, um, small indigenous blocks, manuka, for instance, um, then if you map them into Farm IQ now, then you can get you can get a really good understanding of, of what's going on, and you can also do some really cool modelling. Um, and scenario kind of calculations on you know what would my numbers be if I did this? What would my numbers be if I if I retired that hillside and, and chucked it all into indigenous forestry? Um, Farmax is really good for that, isn't it, um, Thomas? Yeah, I think um, like you've touched on, Alison. There's a few different tools that can calculate a greenhouse gas number. I guess um, if you want to consider making changes to your farm system to do something about that number, that, that's where FarmX sort of comes into its own because it'll give you not just the change in greenhouse gas number with a change to a certain aspect of your farm system, but it'll give you an idea of how that impacts your feed budget and whether that actually works kind of in practice. Um, and it gives you some financial outputs as well. So you can stack up the um, profitability of some of those different options because that's obviously rather important when you're considering these changes. Yeah, yeah, indeed. The one of the one of the cool things about using various different calculators is if you use the Farmax calculator to do a whole bunch of modeling, and then if you were to kind of practice, if you like, using the beef and lamb calculator, then you can kind of get a really good, good comparison on on numbers and run some really cool models on, you know, if I pull this lever here, what would happen there? If I pull this lever here, or if I did that here in my farm system, or if I made changes here or innovated there, what would happen? Um, so Farmax is awesome for that. And I think that um, using the beef and lamb calculator also will also give you a really good kind of benchmarking board overview on um, what your, you know, how you're sitting with, you know, um, and being able to compare yourself to other farms um, in your in your neighbourhood in your region. Um, so, oh, right, fertiliser use. So, um, fertiliser use obviously is the the third data set that you need to put into your calculator, and it's all it's all synthetic N um, or nitrogen use, and um, so fertiliser that contains nitrogen. 
um, nitrogen in the form of urea and um, non-urea as well. And that also, I'm pretty sure that the beef and lamb calculator also takes into account um, the use of ureas inhibitors and bits and pieces as well. It's quite quite good. Um, and you can find your your fertilizer use if you've been recording it in PharmIQ really easily in PharmIQ. You'd literally just go into your calendar. You can search for for fertilizer events in your calendar. Um, any of the PharmIQ team can help you with that. That through the through the support chat if you get a bit stuck. Um, but it's really easy to find out um, how much nitrogen you've put on um, on your farm with the use of the nutrient application report, which I'm actually going to show you because I think it's one of my favorite reports. Garth will be laughing at me now because um, I love it. Hang on one second. I'm going to share my screen again, people. Hang on, bear with me. <clears throat> All right. Share, sorry, two seconds. All right, can everyone see that? Um, so nutrient application report, this is my FEP demo farm, there's a lot going on, it's very colourful, um, that's because I do lots of lots of demonstrations in my FEP demo farm, so there's lots of things mapped everywhere, but um, just, a, just a reminder that whenever you've got your features and your layers turned on, they'll come up in a legend here on the bottom right hand part of your screen, so that's really easy to see. And going back to the effective hectoridge, um, you'll find that down here on the bottom left hand side of your screen. So your total area of your farm and effect, effective hectoridge here. But this nutrient application um, analysis report will be found, found it in your report center, which is up here. Um, little bar graphy icon there. And when I click on that, <clears throat> um, I've selected it as a favorite, but if, if you don't, if you haven't selected it as a, as a favorite, you can, you'll can you find it under land and nutrient, nutrient application analysis um, report right here. Um, if you want to select it as a favorite, you just click on the star and away you go. And it takes a little while because it's pulling a lot of data from all over the farm IQ system. Um, so it takes a little while to find that and load it up. There's a filter block up, up, up here. Um, so you can filter by event type, block, block, uh, sorry, block type, block, paddock. You can filter any way you like, um, whether you want to ignore the calcium on your on your charts or not. Um, but basically it's a, it's a really cool report. It gives you nutrients applied by the season. <clears throat> Um, and obviously my nitrogen's in a in dark blue here, so I can see exactly what nitrogen I've I've put on over the year. This is a really handy report as well to um, print out and attach to your FEP um, if you if you needed to, or to show auditors, um, especially for our larger dairy farms who have to report on their end use every year to their regional council now for the NCAP um, regulations. So. If I kind of scroll down, there's lots and lots of different categories and the way that the report's been cut. So you can pull everything that you need to pull from where you need to pull it. This is um, this is really down here. This is a really um, handy um, cut of the report. So I've got nitrogen per kilogram, um, kilogram a hectare, and then it will split it up over the paddocks and it will show you where I've put it. Um, so yeah, super, super handy report. And then there's a, again, there's a, um, a, a list view, if you like, of exactly what you've put on and where and when. So if you wanted to, um, you know, get a really good understanding of exactly how much N you've put on your, on your paddocks, um, then that's where you go to get it. Super, super fast. And you can print it out. And so if you are heading off to one of the beef and lamb workshops, greenhouse gas calculator workshops, then you could print this report out and take it with you and um, and it's all your fingertips easy stuff does map pop pop so kevin's asking um does map populate first applications by downloading from track map yes so um track map will if there's a little bit to do to set up track map but if you've got track map um and enterprise um the enterprise um, pack, PharmIQ pack, 
then yes, it automate it automatically populates um, your and the the recording of your fertilizer into your map and into your calendar, your farm calendar. So if you want help, Kevin, getting that set up, then give our give our support team a call, um, and they will help you get Farmax. Um, sorry, FarmIQ set up as track map. Um, all pretty easy. Um, we put the slide in because it was just going to be a quick look, um, a quick look in the toolbox. It was going to be a quick reminder of um, what you needed to find and where. If anybody had any questions about, um, you know, where do I find effective he hectareage or where do I find particular information to be able to put into a calculator or I need to know this um, because I've got, you know, some discussions happening with my emissions um, consultant, if there are such people. I'm sure there are, um, then, yeah, um, we can dive in and have a look. So chuck your questions in and then we can actually dive off to FarmIQ or FarmX or Beef and Lamp. Ron says, agree, useful to have the records of permanent vegetation. Yeah, it is. Super, super helpful. Right, um, I'm just going to quickly show you the final report that comes out from beef and lamb. Um, so you can kind of get it, get your heads around what, what that looks like. Um, I think Thomas will, you're going to get ready a, a final report from Farmax, Thomas? Even though I can't hear you, you're going to have to nod you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I don't know what's happened now. Um, two seconds, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen again. And I'll show you that final report from, from the beef and lamb calculator. Here we go. I hope you can all see that. Okay, so here's a here we go into the results. So obviously you've got your categories along the top, and Roselawn is my FEP demo farm, and so they're literally going to give you <clears throat> a really nice printable um, report here, PDF report on your farm emissions, where they come from, so what's um, livestock emissions what comes from your fertilizer and your lime use um, in tons of CO2 equivalents um, and in methane and nitrous oxide. And my farm is pretty low. Obviously, I don't do much on my farm. Um, actually, just a, a quick aside, sitting here in mid Wales on my, in my, my mum's house, she's surrounded by farms and they get paid to do nothing to their land at if they if they take all their stock off their land, they get heavily, heavily subsidized to do absolutely nothing to their land. It's just it just makes me realize how efficient our farmers are in New Zealand and what a, an amazing job they're doing of making farming a success for everyone. Um, that's being paid to sit on your hands and drive around in your tractor that you don't do anything with. Anyway, um, we've got tons of um, greenhouse gases here. Um, so tons of CH, um, so methane, CH4, um, I'm not producing any tons of carbon dioxide, and interesting. And, um, and then the deforestation emissions. So if you have woodlots on your farm that you're going to harvest, um, then it accounts for those as well. And then also your indigenous forest. <clears throat> um, even though you're not really allowed to clear indigenous forest, nor would you want to, um, there, there is a, there's a calculation in there as well, and then your um, shrubland as well. Um, so shrubland, shrubland in the form of um, manuka, manuka vegetation and whatnot. And then we've also got vegetation offsets here as well. So what your what your woodlots are, are getting you, what your indigenous forest is getting you, and then what your shrubland is getting you as well. Um, and then it gives you a um, an estimated net CO two emissions. CO2 equivalent emissions and then your estimated net CO2 equivalent, equivalent emissions per hectare, which is pretty good. Um, I actually like the beef and lamb calculator. I think it's, it's super handy for all of you out there to just get a handle on what's going on. Um, I'm sure if Ron wants to add anything to that, then feel free to jump in, Ron. Um, yeah, super handy. So that's what that, that final report looks like. Um, Thomas, are you going to take us through the Farmax final report? I say final report, but yeah, what they look like. 
Yep. <clears throat> I'm still sure, still not sure if Alison can hear me, but I will share my screen. Hopefully that's coming through. So this is uh, what we call the carbon balance report in Pharmax. Essentially, it gives you a summary of your uh, greenhouse gas sort of gross emissions from the stock with the uh, methane, nitrous oxide, and a little bit from fertilizer, very small on this particular farm. Uh, and then we can get some offsets from the um, forestry. So you get this kind of nice waterfall chart just to give you your sort of net position. And essentially the way that Farmax does that is incorporating all the data related to your feed budget and um, sort of your financial performance as well. So for this particular farm, I've got a few different stock classes. I've got some uh, breeding ewes with various different mobs in here, my ewes and hoggets and, and so on. Uh, same sort of idea for my breeding cows, steers, heifers, and um, essentially each of these mobs has their own stock reconciliation where we can see, for example, in my mixed lambs, how the numbers change throughout the year with purchases and sales and weanings and so on. Uh, and each of these mobs will also have some live weight gain information as well, which can be adjusted monthly. So um, all of that information is sort of incorporated to calculate essentially a dry matter intake. Um, we initially wanted that data to create really good feed budgets, but um, just so happens that that's, that dry matter intake is kind of the main driver for your greenhouse gas emissions as well. So um, that's what's driving most of the figures there. And this farm also has a 20 hectare block of pines. So if I go into some of the details there, I can see that I've got a tiny step block. Oh, yep. Zoom in slightly, Tom, if you can. Yeah, I might. Uh, I'll get on a smaller screen, actually. I'll throw it over to my laptop. Hopefully that. Um, Thanks, to Thanks, Thomas. I can't. I didn't hear Allison any of that. Allison can't hear me, so that might be it. <laughs> There's something really wrong going on with my computer. It must be the Welsh Wales weather i think um yeah golly um there has thank you for that that's brilliant um there have been a couple more questions while you have been showing us that so we've got um louise a says is that indigenous forest planted post 1990 or is that indigenous forest that's always been present and never cleared um i believe it's both indigenous forest i'm pretty sure unless your indigenous forest is in the ETS, Louise. Um, I think I'm right by saying that for the beef and lamb calculator. Um, Ron, you might want to correct me there. Um, just pop something in the chat, but yeah. Oh, can Tom please finish that demo, guys? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd finish um, because you'd stop sharing your screen. Alison will be able to watch back this replay later and she'll she'll be able to figure out what was going on. But I've shared that on a, on a smaller screen now, so hopefully that's a, a little easier to see. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think where I was at, I was just showing the um, some of these individual mobs. This is what their live weight gain profile uh, looks like for the year. So this particular two-year steer mob, uh, these are sort of the daily weight gains and, and how those change each month. Um, so, you know, in September, gaining half a kilo a day, in October, gaining 1.3 kilos a day. And uh, all of that information is used to drive a dry matter intake. So for this particular mob, uh, that's sort of a visual representation of how those dry matter intakes change. Um, and that essentially is what's, what's driving some of our uh, greenhouse gas reporting. So uh, I think that is the end of my demo. The only other thing I'll mention is that since... Um, since Farmax does capture a few different aspects of the farm system, we can also give you uh, sort of, if I make that as large as possible, hopefully that's going to work, uh, we can give you some of these efficiency metrics as well. So, for example, for this farm, uh, we've got 12.5 kilos of CO2 equivalents uh, emitted for every kilogram of product. So if you want to see um, those sort of efficiency figures and how those change with your different scenarios, uh, you, you can get that type of reporting in Farmax too. Over to you, Alison. Um, right. So thank you, Thomas, for doing that. That's really cool. I think we've got a few more minutes to answer um, some of the questions that popped through when you were doing your your, your demo there. Thomas, what have we got here? Um, 
Do, 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 do. Let's have a look in here. Kevin F says, is there going to be an audit monitoring body overlooking? If so, is there a policing body? Oh, um, I think the intention, Kevin, is that there will be, that you will file, if you like, your GHG numbers, just like you do your GST number. So possibly through the IRD. I think that might, but that's the thought, one of the thoughts that's being floated around industry at the moment. Everything is still yet to be determined until um, government Hawaka Kanoa um, sort themselves out and figure out, you know, exactly how they're going to price and how they're going to um, ask farms to report on pricing and, you know, what that looks like. So very much up in the air at the moment. But I think one of the one of the general thoughts is that that you report on your emissions number the same way that you would um, your GST. So is there a policing body? I can't answer that question. Um, absolutely don't know. But um, I imagine that through your processes, there might be um, through audits that, that come through your processes, um, there might be some reconciliation going on there between what you've recorded, um, what you've reported on, and, you know, what that looks like for processor premiums and processor programs that you might be part of. Um, yeah. And um, Kevin F. also asks, do the calculations handle or consider housed, penned or penned stocked? If so, how? Um, I don't think they do in the beef and lamb calculator. Um, Farmax, Thomas, kind of stock on on paddocks or off paddocks? Uh, yeah, there's, that's a good question. We have a couple of ways of tackling that. So I guess we, we don't treat the energy required to do a certain uh, type of animal performance, live weight gain or reproductive performance or whatever. We don't treat that any differently for uh, any type of animal. So if they're... Um, if they're housed or if they're outdoors, we don't have different equations for that. Um, but we do have ways that you can, you know, send stock off to grazing and that sort of thing. Um, or there's ways that you can sort of still capture their dry matter intake and manage their stock wrecks and emissions, but have them sort of not consume pasture in your feed budget. So not sure if that completely answers your question, but um, that's sort of the, the way it's managed at the moment. I think that's I think that's you, Thomas. I still can't hear anybody. Gosh, um, thank you. <laughs> um, perfect. And um, we've got Mark C is also asking. Uh, Matagori is a native scrub that's recorded as being able to reach six meters in height. Eligibility is five plus, um, but it's not recognised for. Is it? But is it not recognised for carbon sequestration? I don't know. Um, Matagori is, is a South Island plant, I believe. Um, Craig might be um, able to answer that or Ron. But um, at the moment, I don't think it would be um, recognised for carbon sequestration unless it was part of a uh, unless it was part of um, shrubland, if you like. Um, that yeah, that's kind of. Um, closed canopy sort of shrubland, if that makes sense. Um, Ron, you might have more, being in you might have more information on Matagori than, than I do. Um, but also I think that um, Hewaka Ekanoa, and as, as I said earlier, Hewaka Ekanoa and government are still fleshing out what, what vegetation constitutes sequestration um, that you can then apply to your emissions number or offset against your emissions number. So... I hope I answered that all right. The others might want to jump in if they want to. Um, any more questions before I jump into this one? This slide here is the resources slide. Um, so we can send this presentation out to you um, if you like. I'm pretty sure Sam said um, that he can send it out to you. So there are some links in there for your, um, for your use. Um, and obviously that handy download um, that we've put up on this presentation as well. So it's an essential guide to knowing your number um, using Farm IQ with Beef and Lamb um, Greenhouse Cascade Calculator, because we know that lots and lots of you will be using the, the Beef and Lamb Greenhouse cas Calculator. We want to support you to, to, to do that efficiently and easily and, and understand exactly where your numbers um, and where your information and data sets need to come from to be able to, 
put into that calculator easily and get a get your head around what's happening. There's a lot coming at you at the moment, um, which I I feel for you. Um, and we've also got the beef and lamb um, New Zealand. There's a link there to the calculator and the action plan. Um, there's um, a link to Farmax's um, calculates your GHGs. Is that a blog, Tom? Or, um, yeah, cool. Um, so really helpful page there. And um, Hiwaka Ekanoa frequently asked questions. So that's all around, um, again, what data sets you need to, to put in, what your kind of obligations could be um, when when they've sorted out what they're what they're doing and um, there's also a really handy link in there for our dairy farmers on knowing your numbers um, and we've got a couple more questions here Lisa R is asking I guess it comes under the same as Gorse and Broom oh thank you yeah and um, how different are the Farmax and beef and lamb calculators are the numbers comparable so um, Thomas you can give a little bit of a, a overview there can't you yeah, sure. So uh, I guess the first thing to say is they will almost certainly be different. Um, as Ron has alluded to there, there's some underlying assumptions in the beef and lamb uh, calculator around changes in stock numbers and stock weights and things through the year. Um, and I guess the degree of difference between Farmax and beef and lamb will depend on how much a particular farm system varies from those assumptions in, in Farmax. Because in Farmax, you can be quite specific with how your stock numbers change through the year, what breed your animals are, um, you know, what lambing percentages are and, and that sort of thing. Um, so that the absolute number will certainly be different. Uh, what, I, what I would say, though, is that um, when it comes to, I guess, doing something about those emissions, the direction of travel with the same adjustment to the farm system should be pretty consistent. So if you make a change that... Uh, increases your greenhouse gas emissions, you're likely to see an increase to a largely similar extent in both tools and, and same the other direction. If you drop your stocking rate 10% in the beef and lamb calculator and then do the same thing in Farmax, you're probably going to see about a 10% drop in greenhouse gas emissions. So um, there you go. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're. I think I feel like we're doing a dive underwater and just using. <laughs> oh, this is so, so funny. Um, thank you. So, um, Lisa R has also asked, "Do we get an international certificate with the beef and lamb calculator?" Um, Ron can probably answer that. Um, I don't think there's international certificates um, for any of these um, any calculators really, but. Um, I'm pretty confident, actually, that the use of the beef and lamb calculator and the Farmax calculators, those reports that you pull out, will be accepted by your processors um, as kind of proof and validation that you um, that you know your numbers and that you're doing something about kind of mitigating or reducing them or managing them, you know, whatever that looks like. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty confident, uh, especially the cell phone farms as well. They, um, I know that they. Um, have a lot of time for the beef and lamb calculator and uh, including that in their NZFAP um, uh, FEPs. Yeah, farm program sort of stuff. Um, and Tanya D is asking, um, FYI, read re the beef and lamb calculator. We buy in wieners and I had to put them in a berth rather than purchases to get the calculator to work across the classes. I've asked beef and lamb about this yet but not received a reply. So if Ron is still on the line, you you might want to you might want to oh there he is thank you Ron oh he's answering Lisa's question that's cool lovely and I'm going to leave it to Ron to answer Tanya's question as well around the the burst and the purchases if that's all right with you Ron I hope so um, I think that is about it we are forty six minutes in. Doing pretty good, pretty well. Question time. If there are any other questions, then chuck them in that chat now. Um, and we can go from there. Otherwise, it's a big thank you from us. And a th and an apology from me as well for, for the technical issues, issues that we've been having. I think they're all to do with my computer that had a bit of a rough ride on the plane over to the, over to the UK a week ago. <laughs> so I'll be looking to get that fixed when I get back. But... In the meantime, I wish you um, all the very best. Thank you very much for joining us, joining us this evening. 
Um, and yeah, thank you to Thomas for demonstrating a lot with what's going on with Firemax and also for Ron for jumping in. And um, oh, God, cool. Thank you, Ron. I'm just seeing your replies there. That's awesome. And to Craig and Sam as well for, and all our PharmaQ staff are sitting in. So if there's any other questions um, after the webinar, after this evening, then please fire them through to us. Um, you can get through to our very handy support team um, on the 0800 PharmaQ number. And um, if anybody wants to get in touch with either Thomas or myself or Craig or your business manager at PharmaQ, then please do get in touch. Um, and Ron has said there that he's available on the Beef and Lamb 0800 number tomorrow. So if you've got questions for Ron Pello at Beef and Lamb, then please do call him as well. And thank you, Ron, for joining us this evening and um, answering some questions. So I think that's it from us. Um, thanks again for coming and we will see you next time.